Hi, I'm Nicole Lamana. I'm professor of medicine and the director of the Chronic Lymphocytic Leukemia Program at Columbia University in New York. I have the great pleasure of being here with Matt Davids. Matt, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Thanks, Nicole. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Davids. I'm the clinical research director in the Division of Lymphoma at Dana-Farber in Boston, also associate professor of, medical, of Harvard Medical School, and uh, very happy to be with you today. So Matt, thanks for taking the time, of course, to discuss some of the data that you're deeply involved with, and that was presented at the American Society of Hematology meeting, or ASH meeting, that we just held recently uh, in San Diego in December uh, of 2024. I thought first we could talk really about one of the trials I'm very interested that you have are doing work in, and this is with a novel BCL2, Lysaftoclax. Can you tell us a little bit about the trial design and some of the preliminary results that you presented at the ASH meeting? Yeah, absolutely. So patients may be familiar with venetoclax, which is the approved BCL2 inhibitor in, in CLL, pretty widely used drug. And uh, that's an excellent drug. As we know, it's, it's very effective. Uh, but one of the challenges with venetoclax is the, the, the starting of the drug, what we call the ramp up, uh, which takes about five weeks and a lot of back and forth to the doctor. And so there's been interest in developing drugs similar to venetoclax that we may be able to ramp up in a more convenient way. And lasaftoclax is, is one of those drugs. Like venetoclax, it's also a pill. Uh, but unlike venetoclax, we're exploring a five-day ramp up instead of a five-week ramp up. And to do this safely, initially, we had to admit patients to the hospital because we wanted to monitor them very closely for this risk of tumor lysis syndrome. That's when tumor cells break open so quickly that they can release some of the toxins into the bloodstream, and that can be dangerous. And so we wanted to make sure that doing the shorter dose ramp up would, would be safe with lasaftoclax. So we designed this study that started with lasaftoclax on its own at a lower dose and then went up to higher doses. And then we added some groups of patients where we're combining lasaftoclax with the BTK inhibitor drug acalabrutinib uh, or with rituximab, the, the CD20 antibody. Uh, so that was sort of the design of the study. I, I, I mute my background so you don't hear all the hospital noise. So I apologize to everybody. But um, can you tell us about some of the results that you guys presented at ASH at the meeting? Because now you have you know, quite a number of patients on the study. Yeah, so we now have 176 patients enrolled in the study. Uh, the majority of those are in those combination groups, uh, but 46 of those patients had just the lasaftoclax alone. Uh, and this is mostly patients who have had prior treatments for the CLL, uh, what we call relapsed refractory disease. Uh, although 22 patients on the study, this was their first treatment was with lasaftoclax as well. Uh, it included patients at a variety of different ages with a variety of the different genetic markers, including some patients with the more high-risk genetics like TP53 mutation or deletion uh, and unmutated IGHV. And so overall, this was a, a well-tolerated um, drug, both as a single agent and in the combinations. Uh, there were a few cases of the tumor lysis syndrome that were pretty mild um, and the, they were manageable. So all those patients who had tumor lysis were able to continue on with the drug and, and did fine. Uh, we saw some of the typical side effects that we know with venetoclax, for example, a low neutrophil count, which is one of those infection fighting cells, uh, and also some mild diarrhea, um, which tended to get better as patients stayed on the drug. Uh, in the combination groups, of course, we saw some of the side effects of the other drug, like with acalabrutinib, some bruising, and some mild bleeding issues, but really nothing too concerning. So the, the combinations also seemed very well tolerated. And what was really encouraging was that the responses were great from the patients. So in, in the patients who, for example, had the combination of the acalabrutinib with lysaftoclax, 96% of the patients had a good response. And when we looked at about a year and a half after starting the treatment, 86 of percent of the patients were still doing well at that at that point. Um, you know, the response was very high also in patients who had not had prior, prior treatment. All of those patients had a good response. And so, you know, I think it's encouraging that this drug is, is well tolerated by patients. It does seem feasible with close monitoring to, to do the shorter ramp up. And, uh, and it does seem quite active too, in terms of uh, being an effective drug for patients with CLL. You know, obviously, similar to all the different BTK inhibitors that we now have available that are approved for our CLL patients, right? We have a brutinib and a calabrutinib and xanabrutinib. We're now, right now, we have newer, I mean, venetoclax is the only BCL2 inhibitor approved, but now we have others like this one being developed. Where do you see, do you think we'll have more than one BCL2 inhibitor? We have now lasaftoclax, there's some rotoclax, you know, where do you see them all fitting in? 
Yeah, I do think there's room for competition here. As we've seen with BTK inhibitors, it's good to have different drugs, even within the same class, because it's always good for our patients to have more options. Uh, I do think Lasaftaclax is, is promising. And, and based on the data that I presented at the ASH meeting, the company has now launched a phase three trial uh, designed to register the drug in CLL. So this is kind of the final phase of trials where if it looks good there, then it could actually become FDA approved. It's, it's interesting in terms of the place of where this particular BCL2 inhibitor may come because the design of this trial, which is called the GLORA study is, is a little unusual. So what this study does, the, the phase three study is it takes patients who are already on a calibrutinib and it randomizes them to either continue on a calibrutinib as they normally would, or to add in the lasaftaclax and actually then continue both drugs for as long as they're helping the patient. And uh, you know, it's it's a bit of a different approach to get a drug approved, a uh, way to sort of maybe extend the benefits of, of acalabrutinib. Um, and if it does get approved, it could allow us to then use the drug in other contexts as well. Um, so I think it's an exciting study. I'll, I'll highlight that it's open at sites around the US. So if that sounded interesting to you, you could look into whether it's open near you. So Matt, uh, obviously I wanna thank you for providing this great summary about this trial um, with Losaftoclax. And we certainly look for more data. It sounds like there's continuing studies uh, as, uh, as Dr. David's noted. And so uh, we look forward to more future data with this drug and perhaps a potential FDA approval at some point in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.